All right, good morning, everybody. Saturday, August 3rd, it's 8 a.m. Uh, nice little coffee hour sitting down with Bills, which is so enjoyable, has just been finished on this Saturday morning. Uh, it's time to crack the whip and get some stuff done. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of things have been going on here, and a lot of things to come. We're going to talk about them. All right, this is a familiar sight. Uh, yesterday morning, pastures got shut down. The uh, corral system got opened. We started uh, training the cattle for what's to come starting now. The bulls have been collected, treated, will be continue to be treated, and are back in the pens to mend up. If you keep up with the videos, this big guy right here, um, I'm only hoping he has a severe case of foot rot. He actually was doing a heck of a lot better uh, the last couple of days. But uh, nonetheless, he's, he's kind of down and out here for a bit. And we're going to talk about treatments that I use that might differ from yours. We all do our own thing, okay? This guy here, uh, he threw out... I'm going to believe he threw out his left hip, and I believe he's also got a little foot rot issue. Uh, I'm hoping a vet is here Monday to take a really good look at his hip and give me some answers of what to expect and what should be done. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's going to be a little bit of a long winded video as long as I have battery life. Okay, it's been a lot of questions of what I use for not only hoof rot treatments and everything else, but also fly control and everything. All right. For hoof rot and almost everything else, new floor. This is literally the wonder drug. This is the common poor man's fix for what is like Zactrin or Draxin. Uh, this is what my checkbook can afford here. This is great stuff. We are huge believers in New Floor. It is literally the wonder drug. And yes, we also use it for foot rot. Usually, two treatments. And they're back to square one. Uh, what do we use for treatments? We do... Uh, uh, 10 mils, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. 10 mils every other day for three sittings, and then that's enough. Um, usually everything or anything clears up by then, for the lack of better words, but uh, new floor. Also for foot rot, copper tox. This is basically just a uh, sprayable type bottle. Um, to go directly on the hoof and just a little bit above. And um, I can't give you the ins and outs. You guys, you go ahead and do your research, but I'm here to tell you this stuff does help and it does work, Copper Tox. Okay, fly control. This is a, uh, this is a big conversation we're gonna have here. This is my only means, and we're gonna talk about changing that. I know it needs to change. Uh, right now, the only thing that's used for a little bit of help in fly control is, of course, the Purina Wind and Rain Cattle Mineral with fly control. <clears throat> it does help. There is a difference versus just the regular uh, red bag Wind and Rain. But I'm going to show you what I'm thinking here. <clears throat> this will not be done this year, but it will be... Uh, it will be in preparation for uh, for next. We did get some rain last night. We missed the, uh, the big storm that was just, just north of us. And I mean, I'm talking, there was a little town about four miles north of us that got just absolutely hammered. We got enough to say we got a good drink and uh, <clears throat> it's a beautiful morning this morning. There's the mineral tub. There probably needs to be a second one out here next year. I do have a second mineral tub, but it's in the heifer lot. 
Okay, flight control. This is what I'm looking at doing. This is the grand entrance to the pasture system that is shut down. What I'm looking at doing for next year, <clears throat> I got to trim up this tree here a little bit. I'm looking at putting up a couple of nice big six by sixes on each side for the grand entrance <clears throat> and looking at haining um, one of those rolling fly drenches. My words are so screwed up. You guys know what I'm saying. And hain it low enough to where the cattle <clears throat> and even a younger heifer have no choice but to rub their back on it as they go through the entrance. That, I believe, is going to be my fix to help in fly control. It will not take place until next year. But um, <clears throat> that's my idea. If anybody differs or has a different idea versus this convenience, by all means, leave a comment. I'm very open to those comments. <clears throat> all right. Yesterday started pasture shutdown. Now it's time to fly through the hay. These pastures, um, a less than keener eye can see that they need some regroup time. And even behind the barn, they really do. I tell you what, folks, before we start talking about cattle here and heifers and everything else, <clears throat> We're also going to say goodbye to 1020, crazy psycho heifer 1020. We're going to talk about that too. <clears throat> Before we do that, <laughs> I want you to take a look at one of the cutest damn calves that I think's ever been born on this farm. They all are. But uh, good old 408 had her calf uh, about three, four days ago. <laughs> Oh, he's a little troublemaker, too. He loves running away from Mama and playing games and going and hiding in the weeds and up at the barn, going under the fence. He had her in a fit yesterday for hours, twice. But uh, I think she's got her... She's got her hooks on him now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, what that is is... Uh, <clears throat> Black Angus with Semmental and just basically an off color. Uh, this, now I'm going to call the steer calf, bull calf, whatever, uh, has been sired by one of the bulls from last year. And uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about Psycho 1020. We started working cattle yesterday morning, and it was basically just an effort and training. <clears throat> they get kicked out of this yard, over into the next one, and they all get cycled through the, uh, the barn and corral system. <clears throat> we'll save that process for another video. Let me get over here so I can get this sun out of my damn eyes. In yesterday's efforts, Last year, we had a very uncomfortable and unpleasant preg check. You all know Psycho 1020. She both killed all three of us. I don't have many excuses why she wasn't taken care of immediately, because you can't have that. <clears throat> but, all right, we got one in heat here. I got to. All right. She was left alone. Went through the rest of the late fall, winter, and the spring. She settled right down. You could still, still see that she was always, you know, doing this stuff when you're out there. But she was okay. She settled down immensely. Uh-uh. No. Now when it comes to two people and anything near the corral. Yesterday, she didn't cause any trouble, but it was extremely uncomfortable. She was a ticking time bomb. And uh, <clears throat> in an hour and a half, she's gone. And uh, 
I'll spare you the details, but she's going to be gone. She's going to be taken care of and have some pretty good Angus burger. We'll leave it at that. All right, normal process here for these big pigs that are going to be going through a pile of hay here for weeks to come while the pastures uh, regroup. <clears throat> Three bales in the morning. Last night I got away with only having to feed one extra. Um, I hope that trend continues. <clears throat> Four bales a day for three plus weeks is a lot of hay. It'll be okay though, it's been accounted for. <clears throat> this is some hay that was baled just yesterday to finish up first crop. Um, it's good hay. It wasn't absolute dry to the bone, so it's getting fed out first. So three bales in the morning after a uh, corral penned up area cycle. After they go through the cycle and they get their grain up there, that's how they're enticed. Then they get their bales. This morning there's a lot going on. Um, decided not to go through it today, which <laughs> I'll figure out that that was probably a little mistake tomorrow. But uh, whatever, there's just, there's a lot going on right now. Yeah. Let's see if we can get 1020 here so you can say goodbye. <clears throat> what number are you? 1046. Hey. All right, there's 1020. Everybody say goodbye. Won't be about another hour and a half. Sorry, girl. Damn good looking heifer. We just ain't taking a chance on you. It ain't worth it. In fact, I don't even want to be around you. I'm going to grow eyes in the back of my head right now. <clears throat> Just puts you on edge. And the way this farm is, the way it's structured and handled, we deal with them extensively. Just like I'm doing right now. Every day, two, three, four times a day. <clears throat> I'm done with that. I've been a little laxed with my decision. Uh, yesterday morning was another... What number are you? Hey. Yesterday morning was a big uh, reality check again. And enough is enough. 10.33. <clears throat> Ten thirty-three. So no more games. It ain't worth it. A lot of you have said that here in the last handful of months, and I agree. But now there's going to be something done about it. So. What you want? You got something you want to say to me? Yeah, I know. So anyway, folks, it's just a little Saturday morning update here. I had about 10, 15 minutes. <clears throat> That's what's going on. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good idea for that, uh, that, uh, that, fl that draping drenched fly ordeal. Uh, you know, you do it that way and every one of them is going to get touched by it a couple times a day which maybe is a little too excessive. I don't know. I'm open to those comments as well. <clears throat> That's my fix. All right, stay tuned today. I got a lot going on, but it's a, it's a little bit of a breathe easy day today. 
basically kind of go about about your business a little calmly does that make any sense you know all the bailings over unless somebody calls for uh, a little bit of custom bailing which I don't see I don't we'll see what happens uh, we're gonna do a couple of videos today we're gonna take a look at both sorghum fields which are uh, uh, pretty impressive and then uh, the cornfield, which I couldn't be more proud of. Now, I've got two properties of corn. One of them's about four or five miles away. That's come leaps and bounds. It's looking really good. <coughs> Especially for the... <laughs> she just got shocked. Especially for the time of year it was planted. Uh, this stuff down here, I, don't, I know you probably can't see it, is just <coughs> ridiculous in a great way so that's what we got going here folks hope it was a little bit helpful for uh, foot rot <clears throat> it's a proven method here I know there's probably other other means out there but that's what we use that's what we do <clears throat> I tell you what I got to build this area up with either some gravel or sand or both here this is, uh, this is some of these calves that might want to drink water. They, they, they can't reach in there. <clears throat> and of course you can see they've been drinking water like it's going out of style because it's convenient. They're here. <clears throat> They're secluded to this yard now. So there's a lot more water that's going to be gone through. In fact, I uh, changed, uh, I put in a, uh, we're going to call it a big Bertha pressure tank. <clears throat> uh, that just happened a couple days ago. And uh, I'm looking at doing a couple other things in an effort for uh, water pressure here. It's not bad, but with the amount of cattle that's here now, we'll put it to you this way. In a couple of years, I need to put in a new well another well excuse me on the farm because here's the deal this farm and the house everything's controlled by one well that ain't gonna cut it <clears throat> there's problems coming so within a couple of years there's gonna be a well dedicated for the farm uh, I see it going right in that corner over there <clears throat> and uh, kind of a new pressure water system here for all the cattle it, it, it's a necessity it's gonna have to happen or big trouble is gonna happen or I'm gonna I'm gonna be replacing uh, well pumps often which uh, <laughs> yeah those aren't cheap so the fix right now is a couple of large pressure tanks the pumps will run longer but less times a day many less times a day that's it, folks. I got to get my button gear. I got to hit the old Saturday morning post office here. Stop off at the feed mill real quick. And then uh, <clears throat> I've got some people coming here for uh, taking care of uh, 1020. So I hope everybody said their goodbyes. Folks, we're going to talk to you sooner and later. Stay tuned for a couple more videos here today.